Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're going to just jump right into another silly new video from The Root. They're one of the worst pro-black, anti-white news outlets out there. So let's go ahead and see what they have to say this week. Police are supposed to protect and serve? But has that ever been the case for black Americans? Yes, the answer is yes. The police protect and serve black Americans, just like how they do with all Americans. The only people they might not be protecting are violent criminals who may be harming them. But even then, the cops will still do their best to protect and serve them, even criminals and or murderers. So when this chick implies that cops aren't protecting blacks, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. That's a pretty radical and absurd statement, especially without any backup to it. So with that said, I'm not sure I could go along with it at all. Sorry to cut your video so early, but unless you got backup to that claim, I'm going to dismiss it without any backup as well. Next, I want you guys to guess what the title of this Root video is going to be. They're about to say one of their craziest titles ever, and it's related to the cops not protecting blacks. You guys ready? You think you know what they're going to call this one? Okay, here goes. Let's go ahead and see what they have to say. Today's baggage, how slavery helped create modern day policing. Let's take it back to 1619, when a group of several hundred Africans were kidnapped from their village, forced onto a Portuguese ship, only to be stolen by English pirates at sea. 1619, that's exactly 400 years ago. And that's how far back the route wants to take us down memory lane, in order to try and prove their outrageous premise. How American slavery helped create modern day policing, what a title. You gotta be kidding me though. If you have a real problem with modern day policing, you'd think you could find influences for it here in the present. Without having to turn back in time four centuries ago. Maybe go back 10 years or 20 or 30, perhaps. But time traveling all the way back to 1619 seems like it's a bit much. To say some event in 1619 has any bearing on modern police forces is pretty laughable. I honestly doubt any American police officers know about this event at all, let alone would it affect their day-to-day -day policing. Really, the root is just obviously anti-cop. They hate the police because they're anti-law and order liberals, who also blame others for all their problems. That's why when black people get arrested, instead of saying, hey, they should probably stop committing crimes, well, instead of saying that, PC social justice warriors like The Root, they blame the people who caught them committing those crimes. This is equivalent to blaming your plumber when he comes in to fix your toilet. He didn't break the toilet, he's here to fix it. Just like how the cops didn't commit the crimes, they're here to fix them. Those who did survive the horrors of the slave trade and were brought to what would become the U.S. were also subjected to the first form of organized policing in the South, known as the Slave Patrol. In case you missed it, the Slave Patrol and Slave Catchers were the first form of organized police in the South. Just look at that smug, insecure face. She tries to put on a strong front here and appear as if she's calling out the terrible people who wronged her people hundreds of years ago, but really, this doesn't come off as strong or reasonable at all. It comes off as if people like The Root and this host, they still can't handle their own history. They're so butthurt and insecure about their ancestors being enslaved, they have to pretend it's still relevant today. In order to explain their current shitty situations. A stronger person would not be so fixated on something that happened in their family's history 400 years ago. Talk about holding a grudge. And people who hold grudges, especially for longer amounts of time, they are rightfully looked down upon. Holding a grudge is petty, and stronger people live and let live and move on with their lives quicker. And that meant if black men and women were off a plantation, then the slave patrol could demand to see a slave badge noting their occupation. Slave patrol could stop and search whomever's belongings just because. Now, I wonder who that sounds like. So because there were cops that stopped and searched people in the 1600s, that means the cops today who stop and search people, they're basically pro-slavery, at least according to the messed up logic behind this Root video. Really though, cops back then were just enforcing the laws of the land. And like it or not, slavery was legal then. And these people involved in the process were committing no crimes. Funny how the Root frames this up though. In their heads, any white person who existed back then were guilty of the evil crimes and human violations of slavery. But really, only a small number of a small percentage of people actually owned slaves, and then only part of that group actually abused their workers. Believe it or not, but some plantations actually went along and treated their people just fine. Things were hunky-dory with no problems at all. The black people worked, the plantation owners were in charge, and nothing bad or foul happened, at least not everywhere. Not to defend slavery by any means, just making a point here. Not all slaves were abused is the greater point. And next, back to the police, not all cops were evil for pulling over slaves and asking for IDs, and then checking their carts and 
horses and such. But it shouldn't be surprising that left-wing SJWs think checking IDs and searching carts is a heinous offense in itself back then, because they believe the same thing is true today as well. These are the same people who believe voter ID laws are racist. And they also just implied cops pull over and search black people's cars for no reason, even though they actually have a reason. When cops pull black people over or any people, it's because they cause suspicion, whether it was them speeding, swerving, or their taillight was out, or they could even have some kind of smell like drugs coming out of the vehicle. Regardless, there's always a reason they're getting pulled over in the first place, but the Rue brushes over this and pretends cops pull over black people because they're racist against them, again claiming criminals didn't do nothing. And why would getting pulled over even matter if you're innocent anyway? Sure, it's a hassle and a waste of time, but if you've committed no crime and have nothing illegal on you, it really shouldn't be an issue either. But obviously, these people worried about getting pulled over did do something wrong, and that's why they object to being pulled over so badly. They're blaming it on racism and slavery instead of remembering, hey, I did just run through a red stoplight about two miles back. Maybe that's why I got pulled over. They enforced the idea that black people were second-class citizens and that white people were the authority. And organized police departments, they enforced this racial hierarchy too. In South Carolina, for example, by 1837, there were dozens of officers in the Charleston Police Department whose jobs were essentially to monitor the enslaved. Well, at least we've made it up to the 1830s by now. Still need to use black and white photography to demonstrate things here, so it's still a highly irrelevant situation. Also, I get that you object to the idea of slavery. I think almost everyone in current year would agree to that. No need to keep virtue signaling about it, but it also doesn't really make sense to keep going back in time and applying your modern sensibilities to it. Like it or not, slavery was legal in the US up until 1865. So police operating in the 1830s would naturally be enforcing laws that kept slaves in their place with their owners. That was the law of the land and the way things worked. And if they did otherwise, that would actually be weird. And basically, this root girl is condemning cops for enforcing the laws of their time because she disagrees with them and they're seen as taboo laws in the present. Again, this is all being done as a roundabout way to call cops racist in the present, but the lack of logic and reason in this whole presentation is still dumbfounding. Just imagine if 100 years in the future, marijuana is completely decriminalized in the US. Then at that time, what if some YouTube channel like The Root used old pictures from nowadays trying to shame cops in the present because cops in the past arrested people for smoking pot? Confused yet? Because I know I am, and I frankly don't care. And well, that's how convoluted and stupid this whole Root versus the cops thing and calling them slaveholders premise is today as well. Law enforcement often was cast in the role of enforcing Jim Crow laws and other kinds of laws aimed at maintaining uh, the racial caste to some and at keeping black people, quote, in their place. So law enforcement, to the extent it existed, would be one thing for white people and another entirely for black people. Yeah, that was the case over a hundred years ago. It's certainly not what's going on in the present, though. I think the implication here is that there are more blacks in prison now because cops are still racist from the slave days of our past. That seems to be what's going on here with the Roots video, and, well, it's completely untrue and absurd. First of all, people who go to prison are there because they broke the law. They got caught, were charged with crimes, and convicted for committing them. And all these arrests have pages and pages of paperwork on them. There's courtroom records and arrest records, and in the present, there's even body cam footage that we can go back on to prove that these people are guilty. But instead, The Root wants us to believe they were all arrested because of racism, even though they have no proof that there was any racism at all. Their best attempt at proving it was because of racism is citing slave stories from 400 years ago. Pretty pathetic. And lastly, to blame the cops for enforcing the laws, which they largely didn't create, is pretty biased and stupid too. It's not like the police back in the day made the laws about slavery themselves, they just enforced them. But The Root wants to blame them anyway because they hate modern cops too, because they hate all police and they hate law and order, among other things. Darren Wilson, the officer who shot and killed Michael Brown, used fear as a defense, likening the unarmed team to a demon. Police killings of unarmed black and brown people have gone on way before Michael Brown and sadly will continue after him. Police are two times as likely to use force against black and brown folks than white folks. More lies and exaggerations. Finally, almost to the present day in this at least, but the whole Mike Brown story was long debunked five years ago when it actually happened. Sure, many lied about it and did the whole hands up, don't shoot thing, and that spurred the Ferguson riots and also helped create Black Lives Matter, but really, Mike Brown is a story about a black man who tried to take the gun of a police officer and then got shot because of it. Forensic evidence and multiple studies have proven this. And sure, you could technically say that guy was unarmed at the time, but that doesn't make him innocent 
assistant or some kind of angel. He was reaching for a gun. And many other criminals and very bad people are unarmed. That line doesn't prove anything about them, though. It doesn't make them innocent. Actually, what's really going on here is The Root is propping up another line campaign, pushing their pro-black, anti-cop propaganda. They're going anti-white here as well because, hey, slavery happened. Pretty crazy that because of slavery, these people think they can support criminality and hate on the police who are protecting our country. But we've seen much worse and we'll see more in the future. And it appears The Root believes these stances so much, they actually think it's okay to lie and make shit up just to try and make their points. In the end, this is just more anti-cop, anti-white people rhetoric coming from the root.com. They see their people, African Americans, getting arrested like crazy in the United States. And instead of going with the most obvious conclusion, they're getting arrested because they're committing more crimes, of which the cops have extensive proof of, well, instead of going with that, the root is being as low IQ as possible, and they're blaming things on an unproven, unverifiable, racist excuse, while also throwing in some slave stories in there for good measure, and for extra sympathy points. What do you guys think? Are more black people in jail because of slavery from hundreds of years ago? Or is it because they commit provable crimes in the present, which we have evidence and videos of? And why do you think The Root blames the cops for everything wrong in their lives and communities? Sounds to me like it's an easy way out and a bit of a scapegoat for them, but you tell me what you think and comment your thoughts on everything below. Thanks for watching today's episode of No Bullshit, and we'll see y'all next time.